The river itself is not a hundred yards across, and Pa and Vernon and Vardaman and Dewey Dell are the only things in sight, not of that single monotony of desolation, leaning with that terrific quality a little from right to left, as though we had reached the place where the motion of the wasted world accelerates just before the final precipice. Yet they appear dwarfed. It is as though the space between us were time, an irrevocable quality. It is as though time, no longer running straight before us in a diminishing line, now runs parallel between us like a looping string, the distance being the doubling accretion of the thread and not the interval between. The mules stand, their forequarters already sloped a little, their rumps high. They too are breathing now with a deep groaning sound, looking back once. Their gaze sweeps across us within their eyes a wild, sad, profound, and despairing quality, as though they had already seen in the thick water the shape of the disaster which they could not speak and we could not see. Cash turns back into the wagon. He lays his hands flat on Addie, rocking her a little. His face is calm, downsloped, calculant, concerned. He lifts his box of tools and wedges it forward under the seat. Together we shove Addie forward, wedging her between the tools and the wagon bed. Then he looks at me. No, I say. I reckon I'll stay. Might take both of us. From the toolbox he takes his coiled rope and carries the end twice around the seat stanchion and passes the end to me without tying it. The other end he pays out to Jewel, who takes a turn about his saddle horn. He must force the horse down into the current. It moves, high kneed, arch necked, boring and chafing. Jewel sits lightly forward, his knees lifted a little. Again, his swift, alert, calm gaze sweeps upon us and on. He lowers the horse into the stream, speaking to it in a soothing murmur. The horse slips, goes under to the saddle, surges to its feet again, the current building up against Jewel's thighs. Watch yourself, Cash says. I'm on it now, Jewel says. You can come ahead now. Cash takes the reins and lowers the team carefully and skillfully into the stream. I felt the current take us, and I knew we were on the ford by that reason, since it was only by means of that slipping contact that we could tell that we were in motion at all. What had once been a flat surface was now a, su a succession of troughs and hillocks, lifting and falling about us, shoving at us, teasing at us with light, lazy touches in the vein, instance of solidity underfoot. Cash looked back at me, and then I knew that we were gone, but I did not realize the reason for the rope until I saw the log. It surged up out of the water and stood for an instant, upright upon that surging and heaving desolation, like Christ. Get out and let the current take you down to the bend, Cash said. You can make it all right. No, I said, I just, I'd get just as wet that way as this. 